Okay, so when I made the video, the seven things that shocked me in Poland, the first thing that I mentioned was the overall quality of the food in Poland and in the EU. Well, today I'm going to be talking about eight different food ingredients that are found in American food products that are not allowed or banned in Poland and in the EU. So without further ado, I'm just going to share some of the examples to which that these ingredients are in, in different certain foods. And then I'm also going to share some of the side effects that they also cause. So without further ado, guys, let's just get started. All right, so the first product on my list today is called Alustra, and it is a fat substitute. There is no calories in it, and basically most products and companies were using this to add as a fat-free alternative. And the FDA, also known as the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S., approved this product in the 1990s. And then in 1996, the FDA mandated a warning label on all products that were containing this ingredient. The label read, this product contains Alustra. Alustra may cause abdominal cramp and loose stools. Alustra inhibits the absorption of vitamins and other nutrients. And then in 2003, the FDA removed this label and issued it as not warranted. So it's definitely not a healthy product and instead you might as well just stick with regular potato chips or just a regular healthy fat instead of a substitute. All right, so the next ingredient is known as azodicarbonamide and it is a chemical that is used in plastics. It's also a food additive and it's mainly used for flour and it's used as a bleaching agent. Many restaurants and fast food restaurants in the US have stated that they banned the product completely. And this was because of the negative publicity that was surrounding the product. So why did the public not like the product? Well, the World Health Organization basically stated that it can cause asthma and some cardiovascular issues for people who are surrounding themselves with the product. And this was not just in the food, but also the plastics that were containing the product and is in the frozen aisles of many grocery stores today. It's mainly used in frozen dinners and pasta mixes and ready to cook meals. Okay, so the next one is coloring agents in dyes. Most notably, red number 40, yellow number 6, yellow 5, and blue 1. Most of these dyes are in foods such as candies like Skittles and also Starbursts, also condiments and breakfast cereals as well. Now, these dyes have been linked to hyperactivity and inattention in children. And some countries in the EU allow them, but they have to put a warning label on the product and these are really just added to simply just change the color of the food itself and I remember hearing stories of a lot of kids like for example my brother would have issues with red 40 where he would eat skittles or something like that and then he would be like completely hyper you know he would basically just be bouncing off the walls or I've also known some people to have allergic reactions to those products as well okay so the next one is BHA and BHT and these products are mainly in gums cereals and vegetable oil butter and also beer. So what does it do? Well, it makes the food last longer. They're not just added to food products, but they're also added to rubber products as well. And the National Cancer Institute determined that the products were non-carcinogenic in mouse models, but the World Health Organization discussed the possible link between cancer and BHT and BHA. And because of that, the EU has banned these products completely. And for the next ingredient, it is bromated vegetable oil, which is also known as BVO. These are added to sports drinks, beverages, beverages and sodas, which keeps the flavor from floating to the surface, which is also commonly used for citrus drinks. Many companies have used it, including Mountain Dew and Gatorade, which is owned by Pepsi. Some of the common side effects are memory loss, tremors, fatigue, loss of muscle coordination, headaches, and some other symptoms. And Pepsi has stated that as of June 8th, 2020, they're going to stop using the product completely. Okay, so for the next product, it is potassium bromate, which is added to hamburger buns and hot dog buns, which make them fluffier and also whiter. Studies have shown that it could be a potential human carcinogen. In rats and in mice, it is believed to cause thyroid and kidney cancer. And it's kind of interesting because in California, they have a warning label on any product that contains this ingredient. But I guess they don't care for the rest of the states. And for the next product, it is ractopamine. This is mainly used in beef, pork, and turkey. And it's really added to the animals to basically increase their muscle mass towards the end of their life before they slaughter them. And it is known to cause cardiovascular issues in humans as well as in animals. It's also related to different behavioral changes in humans such as anxiety and also restlessness. And for the last product it is RBGH which is injected to cows to boost their milk production. This has been shown to cause medical conditions in cows which then more antibiotics are needed to treat those medical conditions which then are going to add that into the milk. And because of those increased antibiotics this can increase the IGF in the milk and this is a hormone that's known to cause breast
breast, prostate, and colon cancer. So those are some of the food products that are banned in Europe. The FDA seems to have a history of just approving all of these different chemicals and things like that. And the next thing you know, 20 years later, there's all of these different links to cancer that these specific chemicals can cause. Honestly, it kind of makes me think of DEET. And when my dad was growing up, he said that trucks would come by and they would just spray DEET right in the road. And then kids would just go back to playing in the midst of all of the DEET. You know, if you think of it too, like the EPA didn't really issue any warnings until the late 90s after it's already been used since the 60s in Vietnam. And the next thing you know, that everyone's saying, oh, sorry, this causes cancer. So I just feel like the US in general has a bit of a problem of accepting these products and ingredients or just not even regulating them in general. For example, a lot of supplements in the fitness industry will come out with products and, you know, on the labels, it'll say not approved by the FDA because they have to have that label if they're simply not approved, but they can still sell the product. So you can basically have this product that's not approved by the FDA and go through the risks by yourself. And there's been kind of some different shady situations with the FDA being paid off by different companies to basically eliminate any public, you know, negativity towards certain different companies. So nothing's ever perfect and we're all lied to pretty much. All right, guys, so let me know what you're thinking down in the comment section down below. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Jinkui i Tanya.